단초. 비단초. 아, this is so bad. Why do people do this? I came as close as you could physically come to sh yourself without sh yourself. The muscle group that got the best workout for me this morning was my sphincter. I am not saying I sh myself because I didn't sh myself, but it took every ounce of my physical control to not myself while hanging from the air and i'm walking through the parking lot this is how i walk i'm just doo, 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 doo. well there's two of us because it was with my completely real girlfriend so it's kind of like like we're walking we're talking that kind of a vibe Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Tuesday, June 27th. I hope you're having a fantastic one. Whether it's your morning, evening, afternoon, night, whether you're watching this in real time or as a playback, which I think it'd be a little strange to watch it as a playback. Regardless, I hope you're having a good one. I hope you crushed it yesterday. I hope you're ready to crush it again today, and I hope you're prepped up to crush it for the remainder of the week. Lots of fun things to talk about. Yeah, I want to talk about the market of how I still believe the high water marks put in and we are trending down. This morning we were trending down and then the market popped on two different reports. One from our neighbors up north from Canada and then also from um, their CPI came in at expected. And also we got a durable goods report way higher than expected. So those came out. The Canada one is kind of interesting but really, I think a lot of people are going to be reacting to the new home sales coming out at 10 a.m. today, a half hour into the trading session. So I want to talk about that. I want to talk about what's currently going on on the global political scale, as in Russia and the Wagner Group and Yevgeny. And is he alive? Is he dead? Is Putin alive? Is Putin dead? What's going on there and its connection to oil? I want to talk about how more and more banks are officially waving the light flag and, and saying, yeah, no, we are definitely going to a little bit of a mild recession. I have a big update on a stock ticker symbol, Darling. If before the world of Shiba, before the world of AMC, before the world of Doge, and before the world of GME, before apes and squeezing was a thing, there's a special thing going down in 2020 when we were still all locked inside. And it relates to the world of EVs, specifically SPACs. And I don't know how many of you were necessarily paying uh, attention at that point in time, but stocks like Workhorse, uh, Lordstown Motors, Hylion, um, there's another one in there, but if it related, like even Neo Lucid, um, what else? If like any EV related name was doing well and some of these SPACs were crushing it, those were the darlings of the time. Like I'm talking mid 2020, that summer when we were first all locked inside trying to figure out what was going on, those stocks were ripping. You fast forward till now, not only have they been cratering, but now some of them are a officially fire, filing for bankruptcy. So as of this morning, Lordstown Motors, ticker symbol ride, I believe it's in Ohio, if I remember. I mean, it was some of my earliest content. Nicola, like it was all crazy back then. Uh, but yeah, Dunzo, 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 Dunzo. So I want to talk about that. A retail stock darling, dead, murked, throat slit, gonzo. Uh, so I want to talk about that. And I also want to talk about some concerning, um, I guess, signs that we're seeing from some of the early earnings. We're not really in earnings season yet, but we do have an update from Walgreens. Not so good. But to be fair, there are other good ones. We're getting some initial looks at companies such as Delta, the airline company, and they're looking okay. So a little bit of a max mixed bag. Then obviously I want to go over the seasonality for today, and I also want to prep you up for what to pay attention to for the remainder of the week, namely one inflation report and two important talks from the chairman of the Fed, Jerome Powell, and obviously 
obviously we'll look at the odds of a 25 bips rate hike coming at the end of July, which it looks like it's pretty much a done deal. And really, I kind of want to kick it off with some other wild stuff that I'm seeing. Apparently, massive growth in the sport of pickleball, which I guess is just growing at leaps and bounds. You have professionals like people like Kevin Durant buying pickleball teams, but also being associated with medical bills, like allegedly going to rip through the roof. Apparently, the new interest in pickleball is going to cost like insurance like $400 million. So just a weird little side story. And the other more interesting wide um, side story is apparently some, I don't know, tree loving hippies trying to stop New Yorkers from having oven and coal cooked pizza. And the city of New York, I don't know if there's anything that has like really gotten everyone to stick together on an issue. And this might be it. Someone's trying to ban oven cooked pizza in New York. And obviously, as you could expect, the responses have not been so agreeable. So I kind of want to kick off with that. Um, uh, also a reminder, remember on Rumble, if you're listening to this right now, you can tune out for a second because you're already good. I have one channel on Rumble. The video is up there. But on YouTube, just my producer and I have noticed some weird things going on with the algorithm. So we're separating everything into two different channels. The live channel, where you're also going to get clips of the live stream, and then an evergreen channel. And what I mean by evergreen is videos that are not necessarily timely. Like you could watch it now in a month and a year, and it should still be viable information. So not really daily updates where if you miss it one day it doesn't matter you go on to the next one that's going to be for the live channel once again just on youtube if you're on rumble if their algorithm works differently so all the content's there you're not missing out on anything but on youtube there is a new channel um uh the second interview dropped yesterday and here i'll throw that in chat and i think the nightbot is successfully posting it so make sure you check this one out uh you could save it here i just put the link in chat right now it is in the description of the video but this one you're really going to enjoy because it's the story of david's son david started trading he's a smart guy he has electrical engineering master's degree so good with math and everything started trading in 2008 2009 and all that craziness and he got into the world of options very early on and he just really really liked it and then in 2017, he was always kind of learning over that eight, nine year period. And then in 2017, he started to take it extremely seriously. So because of the success he had up until that point, and then especially in 2017, he was able to actually run money and he started his own hedge fund in 2018. And then fast forward two or three years later, 2020, 2021, he opened a second hedge fund. So right now you have a guy who's like me, like you, a retail trader who just really honed his craft over roughly about a decade. And he's now running two different hedge funds and it's all basically based on options trading strategies. Of course, we get into that into the interview and he kind of discusses what he does, but more so of his outlook on trading and how to be a professional trader. And the fact that he went from retail all the way to running two hedge funds right now in real time. I think it's an impressive story that a lot of you are going to enjoy. So um, that's obviously pinned to the top, or no, I just put the comment in there, but it's in the description of the video. Or if you just search Matt Coors Davidson, once again, it's already on Rumble, but it's on the secondary channel on YouTube. So if you're like, dude, wait, what's this interview that I'm hearing about? Uh, it's not on the live channel. It's on like the main Matt Coors channel. So uh, just want you guys to know about that. But once again, in the description of the video. Uh, and on that note, let's take a, a little look you see at the market. So right now, yesterday, we closed at 431.44. In pre-market, we're trading at 432.19. Early this morning, things were looking a little weak. We had a little bit of a pop in the London session, uh, held for about an hour right here, and then vomited pretty hard. Things got even worse, and then all of a sudden this durable goods order and the information from Canada, their CPI, their inflation report came out, and the market popped. So uh, getting saved a little bit, bouncing off of support, and uh, we'll see how it opens. Honestly, I know there's the concept of turnaround Tuesday. If the market closes red on Monday, the odds of a turnaround on Tuesday are high. It's better than flipping a coin, but obviously it's not a guarantee. So right now, I mean, I still have my swing plays. You guys know that my IEP, my Tesla, my Microsoft puts 
for July, late July, July 21st. I do have some spy puts for this Friday. One of them I feel good about. The other one, the ones that are at 430, I feel good about. The ones at 425, not feeling so bueno about. So I'm going to be monitoring that through the day, but I'm not like swinging any zero DTs or one DTs right now at this point in time. But obviously, hey, pay attention because we'll see how wild things get. If you do take a step out, I do want to remind you that the trend is clearly now down. We've been trending up, up, and up, and I'm just defining that by higher highs, higher lows. Pretty basic way to define a trend. And then basically ever since this breakdown on Tuesday, June 20th, we've had lower highs and lower lows. So I would argue that the trend is currently downward, and I like to trade in trend i like to trade with the larger trend and i find distortion on the smaller time frame so basically if i'm looking at the daily chart and i see it trending down well on the 5 10 15 i want to see it pop up something that i could take a bearish bet and then see if the overall trend continues i like to trade with the overall trend and in the shorter time frame find really the opposite movement just to lower my risk that's kind of a overall methodology that i think could help a lot of us but anyway today on that note I don't think the story, the bearish story ever since Tuesday the 20th really changes unless the SPY gets above and holds above 434 and we'll just call it 60, 50, whatever. The high from yesterday, which also happens to be just an important level we've been seeing recently. But anyway, I'm watching 434.60. That might turn me bullish in the short term. On the flip side, if we are negative and weak i'd be looking for the breakdown below 431 which i think opens up to the gate to 429 so that's my bullish case scenario that's my bearish case scenario today might be a little bit of a strange day because yes we are getting an economic update we got information out of canada we got information about the durable goods at 10 a.m we're going to get stuff about the new home starts but really the party kind of gets going tomorrow and thursday jerome powell the chairman of the fed will be speaking on both days and then we're also getting the gdp report i believe on thursday and we're definitely getting the pce report another inflation report here in the u.s on friday so today's kind of a strange day where we're getting some reports but it feels like the fireworks are really going to be set off for the remainder of the week so we don't be surprised if there's like a little bit of like just a chop hold pattern type of a day um it might happen so just maybe something to have in your mind s p 500 rises slightly as investors await economic data in run-up to month and quarter end so this is the final week of the month the final month of the quarter and obviously this is q2 so we're going to be about halfway through the year and it's time to take stock about how everything's been going have you been crushing it the first half of the year do you need to maybe change a couple things here and there to make the second half i think a lot of investors and traders are going to be taking this remember next week is the break the market is open half a day on Monday, but not many people are going to be trading it. Then the market's closed on Tuesday, an observation of Independence Day, July 4th. So next week is arguably a shortened trading week, pretty much Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I just want everyone to be prepped for that. So as we all kind of leave a little bit early for vacation, let's say midday this Friday and then come back Wednesday, use that time to be like, do a little bit of research on yourself. Do a little bit of an analytical breakdown of like, okay, what's been working? Let's double down on that. And the things that haven't been working, maybe it's time to leave it behind in the first half of the year. Before we get into everything, I need to share the craziest story that's currently going down in New York. Uh, if you haven't heard, New York, some genius has come up with the concept of banning ovens for cooking, as in oven pizzas and obviously this is like some like deranged uninformed environmental argument but as classic new yorkers would tell you um the reaction is pretty harsh and i would arguably i would say yeah it's pretty reasonable the reaction uh because the what they're attempting to do which i don't think is going to be law like let's be honest i think new yorkers would be very very angry i think it would just be a, a political issue but they're trying to basically ban good pizza scott is the guy making so obviously owns a pizzeria and he's gonna start hucking these pizza slices at uh, i believe city hall the woke ass idiots who run this city are doing everything in their power to destroy it we have naked men with their titties bouncing around all over the city yesterday, in public, in front of children. We have the most violent, raging crime rate ever. We are being invaded by illegal immigrants who are being treated way better 
than our homeless veterans, our teachers, and first responder heroes who were fired, still not compensated, because they didn't take the Fauci injection. Our city schools produce the dumbest kids, and the woke-ass punks who run New York City are afraid of pizza? The world used to respect New Yorkers as tough, thick-skinned, and gritty. Now we have become pussified. It's a pussified. damn shame. You heard of the Boston Tea Party? Well, this is the Boston, P New York, this is the New York Pizza Party. Give us pizza or give us death. Just starts fucking pizza. Give us pizza or give us death. Give us pizza or give us death. Give us pizza or give us death. Just getting ready to throw multiple pies. I like how he goes more than one pie. He's like, I can't stop at eight places. That's what keeps doing. Can't have a small business. Can't have pizza. New York City is nothing without pizza. Fair point. All right, we're two pies in. 16 slices for those of you keeping count right now. We're going on to the Boston third pie. Tea party. This is the New York pizza party. Moving our way up to 24 slices. I gotta do my thing, man. He's like, uh, can you please stop? We got a pizza thrower. And then actually, here I did find how it concluded for those of you who are curious. For the pizza? Yeah, that, that, that because they shut down pizzerias because it's destroying the fucking world. I know the cool We got crime all over the fucking place. Uh, the drug problem, the fentanyl problem. This wasn't a Boston Tea Party. This was a New York pizza party. Look at this. Getting arrested. You gotta love New York City. Nah, I'm not getting arrested. Give me okay. a summons. Oh. Just giving him a summons. Imagine explaining that to the judge. It was only two full pies. Court summons. Let us have our coal oven pizzas. Dudes with Can't have coal oven pizzas. In the city yesterday, in front of fucking children, but this guy's worried about fucking pizza. <laughs> the city used to be tough. We were gritty. We turned into a bunch of pussies. Bye. We're protesting with the pizza. He calls it how he sees it. And then obviously, uh, just if you know who Dave Portnoy is from Barstool Sports, he also does... Is this going to come up? Uh, he's big into the pizza world. The whole like one bite thing. Uh, come and take it. They have a new shirt. Come and take it with the oven, coal oven pizza. Like it's becoming a real thing. It's absolutely hilarious. I'll do a real quick rant here. Um, and before I start, this is what? A flower hanging New York's down. I'm freaking out. Faces, my backdrop, Pinehurst. Uh, anyways, in case we're in a little like cave, everyone sent me this story. <laughs> Where are the Ninja Turtles? Apparently in That's New York one. City. Some fucking little liberal arts, Ivy League, pink-haired, crazy liberal who's never worked one day in the real world is on an environmental commission. And they woke up from their little nappy poo, wherever that may be. And they're like, I figured out how to save the world today. We have to get rid of coal oven pizzerias in New York City. We got to stop that. The, the emissions, I guess, is pollution. Blah, blah, blah. You know what? Pizzerias use coal ovens. All the best. All the best. John's a bleaker. Patsy's, Tatano's, you fucking name it. Any pizza place, they're like, oh, this is Manhattan. This is old school. This is what people think about when they think of NYC. They have a coal oven. They've been grandfathered in. They've been there for 100 fucking years minimum, most of them. In this environmental commission, la di da da person wakes up and wants to ban coal ovens? Are you fucking kidding me? Do you know what's going on in New York? You got rats. You got trash in the city. You got fucking cars, planes, private planes. You got people getting slashed on the subway. You got flash mobs robbing stores. And you're coming for coal oven pizzerias you think shutting down like 10 to 15 pizza places is gonna make a fucking difference they've been there for 100 fucking years now this ain't gonna happen 
because people unite on something like this. You they already do. have somebody who was already outside, like, uh, government center or whatever they call it, New York, throwing pizzas at the workers, being like, you're not taking our pizza. So, no, I don't think this is going to happen. Pizza it just gate. shows you how fucking stupid pizza some politicians gate. are. You're going to come after pizzerias for fucking global warming? Are you fucking nuts? Now, like I said, there's no way this get passed. But this is sometimes like, hey, Dave, you, you can't threaten people. Well, this is a threat. <laughs> I can threaten people. Hey, Dave. If they come after John Zabliger, I will come for their throat and I will never let go till I squeeze the life out of them. Leave the fucking pizzerias alone. The best ones in the world. That's, listen, I've never <laughs> been the biggest New York City guy. They're old school pizzerias. That's fucking the guts of the city. You come for them, I'm coming for your throat. That's a promise. I truly don't know if there could be a dumber decision from whoever's on this like environmental board to come against pizzerias in New York. Like, I don't, if you gave me a hundred years and you're like, Matt, you have to spend these hundred years thinking of the dumbest thing you can do to get all New Yorkers to hate you. I don't think I would have come up with something this dumb. And yet, it's happening in real time. Mr. Pointoy there did allude to the fact that this is something people will rally behind. I 100% bet that they will. 100%. I just don't see how this goes through. And in fact, folks, I want to get your vote on it, but I think we should just commit to maybe closing down this entire concept of Matt Coors, the Goonies, and trading. I think we should just go full pizza from here on out. And it's up to you. But I think June 27th onward until I think this is a fight and a war that we could take up. We have numbers here. There's thousands of us, thousands around like save our pizza, give us pizza or give us death. I think we should become full pizza, full pizza until true justice prevails in this particular situation. Uh, and it also kind of works out because we have a holiday coming up. So we might as well just become really pizza centric, really pizza centric. But Texas Roadhouse, I know what you're saying about Texas Roadhouse, but where does it stop? Seriously, if they come for pizza, how do we know that they're not going to come from barbecue, man? Like, in a weird way, us protecting the pizza industry is also protecting the barbecue industry. You know, if you give these kind of pizza an inch, these pizza stealing people an inch, they're going to take a mile. And my question to you is, where is it going to stop? Where where would it possibly stop if we let them take away New Yorkers pizza? And I know some of you guys might not really be in New York, but it's not going to stop here. You're going to have someone on your environmental board who's like, hey, you know what they're doing in New York? They're getting rid of all the good pizza. Getting rid of all the good pizza. I wouldn't be surprised if this is somehow funded by another competitive pizza industry that's just trying to get rid of the good stuff. And I understand why they're selling this shirt. Come and take it. They <laughs> Wait, what were the comments on this? Uh, already sold out. Good Lord. Really? It's already sold out? They've already sold that many of this? Uh, is it sold out? Feels like you could buy it. Tommy Tank Saturdays are for the boys. Champions. Man, they sell a lot of merch. Uh, pay. F yeah, I don't know. It looks like you could get it. Maybe they had to do a restock or something. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if going around New York, if I see, start to see this shirt all over. Anyway, another crazy thing I found out about. Pickleball injuries may cost Americans nearly $400 million this year. More physical activity is a good thing, right? Uh, it is. Obviously, more physical activity is a good thing. The way a UBS analyst came up with this is the firm estimates between two hundred fifty to $500 million in costs attributable to pickle injuries in 2023 and it kind of just did a breakdown of different age cohorts and then injuries per 100,000 and how this game really does seem to be massively popular in like the 50 to 80 group so obviously if they're more prone to injuries and then that's the group that's being more competitive in this sport or playing it more obviously injuries are going to spike and then they looked at the injuries and kind of the average cost in our healthcare system and they came up with a pretty hefty price tag of anywhere between 250 and 500 million. Uh, I wasn't really in the know of the fact that pickleball is growing by leaps and bounds. 
Um, it is becoming massive, massively popular quarter over quarter. The growth of pickleball is just astounding. I haven't even seen it in person. I've seen videos of it. I understand the concept of it. Obviously, I've never played it. And I guess my question to all of you is, is it worth it? Like, do we have any pickleball fanatics in here? Like, is should I be a somewhat of an early adopter and just try to get really good at pickleball? Or like, I don't know, I'm kind of going off of you guys. Like, what am, what's, what's going on here in pickleball? Uh, my, my sport is the best. Pickle me timbers. <laughs> I like that. So worth it. You take a ball, any ball, and it's all bring pickleball. I think it's a little different, but maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I'm writing it down so I can look into it. I bet there has to be courts and stuff around me. Matt, pickleball courts. It's just a day where between the pizza, the pizza gate, and also with pickleball, I feel this, this is potentially a life-changing day. I'm more of a serious note before that bell goes dingity ding ding ding. Putin says Russia avoided civil war as Wagner mutiny case ends. Defense Ministry says Wagner to transfer heavy weapons to army. Putin agreed not to prosecute Wagner in deal to end rebellion. So this is the big news over the weekend. It was basically a 36-hour rebellion, some calling it an attempted coup, but there was some legitimate questions of is Russia going to be overthrown as in is Putin going to be overthrown by their mercenary group? Uh, this guy, um, Yevgeny, is the leader of the Wagner group, is in Belarus allegedly right now. Uh, I say allegedly because who knows? I don't see how both Yevgeny and Vladimir can live after this. I don't see a world in which there's space for the two of them. Uh, but who knows? Crazier things have happened, so definitely pay attention to it, especially with the impact on the oil market. As of now, though, things do seem to have quieted down quite a bit. Japan stocks are roaring back. This rally may be different from the 1990s, bubble high. So Japan is kind of in a weird scenario where unlike the US market, we're kind of always generally trending higher if you take a large enough period. Uh, that's not true for the Japanese market. Back in, I believe, the late 80s i want to say it hit its all-time high and it has not been back there since but now it actually is making a comeback um it's not at that high yet but it's definitely getting in that realm so something to pay attention to also worthwhile to pay attention to especially if you're a forex trader trading like the japanese pairing with like the japanese yen with anything so uh international markets we're seeing quite a bit of strength in japan and also the german dax as well on the flip side of it, a U.S. recession is coming this year. USBC warns with Europe to follow in 2024. I believe right now my base case, hang on, it would stop. We we being Tifu eating soja milk drinking people, it would stop at, oh, Peter. Yeah, um, I don't know if, especially in New York, I just don't see that pulling off. I, I agree with you. Uh, a U.S. recession is coming this year. USBC warns with Europe to follow in 2024. My base case is yes, a mild, a shallow recession. I think sometimes when we say recession, everyone's mind thinks of the financial crisis in 2008. And we think that's just like the base case when things get bad. But understand that was an extreme situation. That's not really a normal recession by any means. So I don't want this to be like that doomsday call out and like thinking, oh, everything's going to plummet. I think things come down. I think right now we're fundamentally overvalued, especially based on many major economic measures. And we also are still battling inflation and battle inflation. You have to push down on the economy. Basically, things are just running a bit too hot. Things are overvalued, especially in the tech sector. I think it's reasonable that we have a pullback and it wouldn't be the most insane thing to see unemployment tick up and also maybe our GDP take a hit for a couple quarters, which would officially trigger the definition of a recession. So I think we could get through it where people kind of talk about it and maybe we all complain as we always do of like the economy not being the best, but I'm not thinking of this like uh, the bubble popping in the early 2000s or 2008, 2009, the financial, like the housing crisis, the great financial recession. I, I'm not seeing that. The As of now, that's not how I interpret the current data set. Obviously, take that with a grain of salt. I was just in high school when 2008 happened, and I was about seven years old when the tech bubble popped in the early 2000s. So I'm not pitching this to you as like, oh, I've seen so much of the economy, decades and decades of experience. But it's just our unemployment is pretty low. Average income, like, like we're seeing decent growth. Like, 
it's the I would argue the biggest inflation right the issue right now actually is inflation so um I, I see a lot of doomsday and I get it because that gets clicks whether you're reading an article or watching a video it's just inherently not my base case right now markets are pricing in rate cuts too soon uh, I find this interesting because for the longest time we were being told that, yeah, they're going to cut rates all the time. And I just didn't see why, because the Fed has not bluffed at any of these points. As of now, there's a 77% chance in July we're going to get a 25 bips rate hike. But we were told that like at some point in 2023, it's going to cut. Uh, and we saw this. Like At one point, people thought it would be in late 2022, early 2023. And they keep kicking their like their fancy analysts are kicking it down the road and being, eh, ah. Uh, I find that interesting. I find it very, very interesting that a lot of these fancy schmancy people with their fancy schmancy pedigrees are commonly wrong. I find it surprising, but it I guess they still get paid the big bucks for doing so. So anyway, I want you to know that I don't really see rate cuts coming this year whatsoever. Whatsoever. Not like I think the statistical chance of it is very very low and if it were to happen it would actually signal something very very bad for the fed in my opinion right now to cut rates of this calendar year it would be highly representative of the fact that things are going horrifically wrong and they need to take their foot off the throat of the economy i don't think it's happening i think right now the fed is showing to the world that nope they're willing to keep pushing things until something breaks and we've seen some regional banks break. And I think that to them, that is a cost that they are clearly willing to take. So that's just my thoughts on it. I do believe at the end of July, we're going to get another 25 bips rate hike between then and the end of the year. I think we're getting another 25 bips rate hike. And I would not be expecting the Fed to cut the rates really in the first half of 2024, like at all. I think we're just coasting unless things get very bad things would have to start, like more things would have to break for them to be like, Ugh, we did it a little bit too far. Uh, on that note, dingity ding, 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 the casino is open. Best of luck to all, play responsibly, if not, have fun. Um, so let's see how things go. Market's opening, we're gonna watch it for the first five, 10, 15 minutes. As a reminder to all of you, I have IEP, Tesla, and Microsoft puts for July, July 21st. The IEP ones are for July 14th. So anyway, mid to late July, I have Microsoft, IEP, and Tesla puts. I also have SPY puts for this Friday, June 30th. Right now, the only one in up money are the Tesla puts. They're up 12%. The other ones are down around 20% roughly, but uh, not, not the most worried about that right now. Uh, I'm still... You guys kind of know my plan for the SPY. It's nothing too special, nothing too brainiac. I'm either waiting for the breakout of 434.50 or waiting for the breakdown of 431 to see what the trend's going to be. Uh, I'm not really, nothing too big brain going on right now. I'm just, I have my positions. I'm watching it. I'm waiting for breakouts. I'm watching for breakdowns. I'm waiting for confirmation. Uh, I'm looking for some downside gap fills on Microsoft and Tesla. Beauty on the daily chart. I really like the setups, but I had a really good yet day yesterday. I mean, you guys saw it. I think the swing from Friday to yesterday was like 20K and I officially locked in a realized gain of like 11 or 12K yesterday. So I'm, I'm not feeling that pressure to like do anything too, too nuts. Um, I see some of you talking about ride and rightfully so it is worthwhile to be spoken about today ride uh gapping down 45 percent ride is getting absolutely slaughtered if you very quickly want the tldr on what's happening with ride we need to rewind let's talk about lordstown motors ticker symbol r-i-d-e if you've never heard of this before it was a retail stock darling circa 2020 i'm talking before doge shiba amc and jimmy that all kind of got going in 2021 in 2020 still when we were locked inside and the federal reserve was doing quantitative easing and people were getting stimulus checks there were certain bubbles in that time that were ripping 
and really it's everything that related to EV. So yeah, you might be thinking of things such as Tesla, which obviously ripped in that time period, but there was a lot of other smaller guys that were doing really, really well in that time period. Think of, yeah, kind of your, more of your upstream plays, like your charge point, your fuel cell, but some of these actual like auto makers, like think of your Lucids, think of your Neos, think of your Workhorse, think of your Hylion, uh, and one of them was Ride. Ride was actually associated with Workhorse, uh, that ticker symbol WKHS. That one had a huge following, and unfortunately, it did not go well. I remember when I started my content creation career, I tried to follow it because it had a huge following, and everyone was trying to understand, would it or would it not be getting the USPS contract? Everyone was betting heavily that it would. It, what is, it didn't give it they didn't get it and the stock plummeted the main people following the stock just all left it was horrific if you look at the chart it went down 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 but anyway they were kind of like i mean they cross over in management and like there was a lot of relations with another company lord sound motors ticker symbol ride and apparently even though it was ripping higher in circa 2020 now that we're here three years later it seems to have met its downfall U.S. truck startup Lord Sound files for bankruptcy after Foxconn deal falls through. Foxconn planned to manufacture Lordstown EVs at Ohio plant. EV maker warned it may it may fail on Foxconn dispute. Lord Sound Motor shares plummeted after the EV maker, once hailed by former U.S. President Donald Trump for saving automaking jobs, filed for bankruptcy. The move to seek Chapter 11 protection from creditors follows a protracted dispute with iPhone maker Foxconn Technology Group over a deal to make pickup trucks for Lord Sound at an assembly plant in Ohio. That's also where Workhouse was, uh, like their location, their headquarters. Once again, a lot of interconnections between Workhorse and Lordstown. Uh, but really, just for those of you who care about this, Workhorse, they were kind of redoing like kind of those mid-delivery fleets, which is why a lot of people thought it would be getting the USPS contract. Lord Sound was actually just making trucks like for the public um, and obviously it never really got off the ground. The Taiwanese manufacturer has said it was prepared to pull out of their production partnership, prompting the EV startup to warn it could fail if it was unable to resolve the conflict. Lord Sound Motors files for bankruptcy, sues Foxconn over 170 million funding dispute. Lord Sound Motors filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection early Tuesday, June 27th. Lord Sound also sued Taiwanese contract manufacturing giant Foxconn, alleging it breached a deal to provide the EV startup with additional funding. Foxconn which bought Lord Sound's Ohio factory for $230 million last year, said it had been proceeding in good faith, but it will now consider legal action of its own. So obviously a sad, sad conclusion to this story, and it just it doesn't seem like it's going to be ending well. I mean, right now it's down 45% as I'm filming this, but if you look at the daily chart and just kind of zoom out, you can see, yeah, at one point, 2020, 2021, it was crushing it. This is when a lot of EV was crushing it. A lot of SPAC was crushing it. And then the fundamentals just never really improved. It really never caught a break, got crushed, popped a little bit, got crushed more. And then in fact, it's been dying so much, they had to do a reverse stock split. And that's just basically a last ditch effort to not get delisted because you're below whatever the requirements are going to be from the NASDAQ, typically around a dollar. And even that got a little bit of a pop, but on this news, it's done so. This is a death spiral. If you're in ride, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but the chance of surviving this is slim to freaking none. And it's kind of just interesting for me to see this story that three years ago, everyone was hyped up about. This was obviously a bubble S thing, especially in 2020, the EVs and the SPACs, and it's, it's all just coming down now. And this one unfortunately came down so much that it's done so. And let's just check out its sister company. We're of course, look at doing the exact same thing. 2020 things got nuts. Everyone's like, it's gonna get the USPS contract. And then you can pretty much see right where it was announced that it didn't. And then blend even more, bounced a little bit. And ever since then, once again, just another death spiral. And you're gonna find this with a lot of the companies from that exact period. Highland, another one in this world, ripped in 2020, dead, 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 dead. 
once again, this is just three examples of it. You're going to be able to find many ones if you look at the EVs that ripped in that time period or the SPACs that ripped in that time period, or especially the EV SPAC plays that ripped in that time period. Pretty much none of them doing well. In fact, if you look at this whole related ecosystem, the one that's held up the best, and I'm not really calling it a SPAC, I'm just calling it an EV automaker, truly is Tesla. Tesla has a, had a very different trajectory from that time period. Yeah, it ripped a bit, but because this company has, you know, legitimate fundamentals and is uh has a, a little bit I would argue more of critical mass, it's been able to survive and obviously recently you could argue that it's actually even thriving. So, unfortunately for Ride, it's not dead yet, but it does seem to be what we'll refer to as I guess a a zombie company on its way to death's door and maybe it could get some sort of win against foxconn in the legal proceedings but i would not be holding my breath on that all right where are we at in the market where are we at were any of you around during that time were any of you remembering lucid hylion workhorse uh nicola like they were all kind of together and i'm just curious if um you guys remember that at all Lucid, I mean, Lucid actually popped recently because of uh, a deal with Aston Martin that was announced yesterday. But I'm curious, like, how many were any of you here actively trading Hylion, Workhorse, Ride, anything like that? I made a little on the Lucid SPAC, was in the Lucid SPAC. Yep. CCIV, LS 10K on Hylion, Lucid whooped me. Uh,. I, I remember Workhorse because it paid. Hopefully you got out early. Or did you play to the downside, Just Bird? I'm curious. Remember Mara and Riot were 60? Well, that was with the crypto thing. Mara and Riot rip on like when crypto went nuts. Lucid is a joke. Maybe. I mean, it's delivery and production numbers have not been impressive, but it, it's still kicking. It's still fighting. Thoughts on ChargePoint? Uh, I've been asked this multiple times recently. Another company that's just come down quite a bit. Like once again, look at ripped in 2020. This was part of the EV craze and it just had like lower highs, lower lows. I'm not getting this. It, it's just trending down. Uh, I don't know much of its fundamentals. If you're like, well, hang on. I think it could be improved because of XYZ, man. I hope you're right. But this was a SPAC play that ripped and then it got absolutely crushed going the exact same way as workhorse. Nicola, Lucid, like it, they're, they they all did the exact same thing. Matt is pumping Lucid. Don't fall for it. No, I'm not. I don't own it. And it look same thing. Rips. This one, I guess, came to the scene a little bit later, but still ripped. This one had a interesting secondary push in late 2021, but then got crushed from there. So this one put up a whole nother fighting chance. But look at lower highs, lower lows. I, I just don't see what's enticing about it. I, I just don't see at all. Uh, YouTube traders blew up at the same time. Not sure which came first. Uh, generally, I mean, just from my own experience, you first have to have a community. And then that community, like, it's not like any unknown YouTuber is making something that's like all of a sudden they are like creating a community. It's more of they know a community and that community ends up watching their videos. So like a lot of these things were ripping and people started making videos on it. So then the people who cared about it ripping watch those videos. It's not like YouTubers somehow fostered all of that interest. The interest was there. People started searching it. And like, obviously there was like lower competition because a lot of the OG YouTubers in the finance sector weren't covering it. A lot of the OG YouTubers in the world of finance, they didn't cover specific things. It was more high level of like long-term investing, trading strategies, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I remember, uh, I mean, I've, I lived through it. I, I've seen people who blew up because they were covering Nikola. I saw people who blew up because of they were covering Workhorse. I mean, honestly, like look at all the people who of at one point in time we're covering GameStop or AMC and now you don't know anything about them. Some people are just like following a certain hype wave and then they can't transition to anything else because they don't have other knowledge. They're not, um, there's, there's no other substance to their content. They're there to cover one exclusive thing. And if there's no more interest in that one exclusive thing, they're gone. So uh, I lost like 28 K in the market so far. 
Julian, I hope you make it back. Trey, LOL. Well, shots at... No, there's so many more. I mean, Trey is one of them, obviously. But I'm talking like... I mean, I know of many content creators who covered Workhorse and Hylion. Like, the way AMC and Jimmy had a community... Granted, not as big. They were still big communities. So there was like a lead workhorse guy who like always crush it with workhorse videos on YouTube. There was Hylion. There was Chargepoint and Fuel Cell. There was Nicola. Um, at that point in time, there was also a big spurt of penny stocks. Uh, I mean, folks, I can name like 20 people probably. Like I watched them all. Like I lived through it. I was attempting to make content alongside of them. There's a ton of crypto ones. I mean, there was big people in Doge, in Shiba. Uh, recently, there was a pop off of a couple people in Pepe, but it was so short lived. They didn't really get any of like the wave going. Like it trays an example of it, obviously. Um, but it, it's much more than that. Like this cycle is a cycle that it never happens in the exact same place, but the same cycle just in a different sector is continually happening, continually happening. Uh, Ricky Gutierrez. I don't know about that. Ricky was kind of early. He has like a whole trading group. So he, I don't think on the forefront, he was necessarily a like content creator he had a trading group and he was just one of the og so he also built up quite a following on content but to my understanding he's much more of like a, a trading room kind of a guy um like teddy only with ipos i only follow matt because he's sick dude i need to get to the gym more I've, I've been going to the gym, but the weight's not coming up as fast as I want. I'm down seven and a half pounds. What am I, two weeks in? Two weeks and a couple days. How's Workhorse responding to this? Workhorse just got slaughtered. Snow has a deal with whoever now. Up 2.3%. Um, still a bag of mayo. Yep. Currently. Ricky is the real deal. Very down to earth and super knowledgeable on charting. Uh, I, I can't attest to that at all. He might be, might not be. Um, I, all those trading room people, like I've, I've used a couple of them. I was never impressed. I've never used him. So I can't like fairly comment in one way or another. Uh, but it is that type of stuff is not uh, my, my cup of tea really. Uh, been through it before, didn't really find any success, uh, but I, I've seen a couple of his videos. Uh, I, I don't know enough to say anything positive or negative. I've heard positive and negative things about him, but it's not really fair for me to like take a stance, be like, he's great or he's awful, because I just don't know. I haven't been through his courses. I don't know what he says. It's just not what I know about. This is basically a trading group, Matt. Is it, though? This feels like a haha. You just lost money doing dumb shit in the market group. Uh, Trey was humble. Even you told Matt he was smarter than him. Out of respect, I miss Trey. Uh, I mean, it was all an act. Like, he did so many underhanded, undermining things, not only to me, but the whole community. It, it was all an act. All 100% an act. Um, Man... I, like, I don't really care to, like, go through it all just because, like, he's gone. He quit. So, like, why, why does it matter? But, like, dude, the amount of times that he would actively post information, I told him it was wrong. He'd be like, no, I have to keep it up because it got views. He was so view hungry. He was so admiration hungry. He didn't care about getting out actual information. All he cared about was, like, does the community like him? Is he getting views? And this didn't happen once. I mean, off the top of my head, there's, like, three, four, five times where he's just like, no, I have to keep it up because it's getting views, even though it was like wrong. Um, and then it was all, it was all shrouded in the concept of like, no, 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 I'm the fun guy. Just hang out with me. We're having a good time. Like it, he didn't care about truth. He just cared about cultivating like a, a fun atmosphere, which if that's what you want, that's what you want. I mean, we all have different opinions of what we should watch, what we shouldn't watch. Um, but for me, when people's money was on the line, I always thought, no, hang on, maybe accurate information was like the most important. Uh, 
I need pizza oven powered by baby seals. <laughs> what in the world? Uh, what are we doing today? Tesla flat. Can't make a decision. The spy pop came down just like yesterday. We've been pointing this out of how the going trend has been flushes and it just overshoots a little bit of liquidity hunting <coughs> goes for a little bit of a liquidity hunt and then pops right out of it so it makes a fresh low so whoever had stops there gets basically absolutely screwed and then it pops right out of it pops right out of it the going trend uh as of now not too much going on we were just waiting either above 430, 460 or below 431. We're at 432.60, kind of in no man's land, essentially at the low from two days ago. Not yesterday, but two days ago. Here, let me do that. Um, so we'll watch that. What's your vote on the day? I feel like I forgot to ask. Microsoft uh, up a little bit, most likely, on the fact that, yeah, it got plummeted recently. So, like, not the craziest thing to think that there could be a bit of a recovery. But from there, also worthwhile to note that the CEO, like, looking to make, like, 500 million or something, like, crazy by, like, 2020 billion by, like, 2023. They just came out with, like, massively high uh, profit and revenue targets by the end of the decade. Uh, so why do you think he quit the stock market period? I don't think he, when people started to realize like what it was about and his lack of knowledge, he couldn't handle the hate. I mean, um, obviously like the internet can be, uh, like a very, very harsh place. And I mean, I think he did some really fucked up things, but I also think he's a genuine guy and I don't think he had like the, um, like proper personality makeup to deal with like such an excessive amount of hate. Um, it's not the easiest thing to do by any means. Uh, so I think it was just like a hate thing. And he's like, well, hang on. I'm, I mean, he made over a million dollars off of AMC. He probably made more off of YouTube. And now he uh, like is on full disability from the government. So like in terms of money, he's good. He doesn't need more money. And like at that point, like obviously he doesn't necessarily care about like internet fame by any means. So like, why not just live a quote unquote easy life financially he's made. So why not just do what you want to do? Um, so I, I mean, I, I kind of understand it. It's not necessarily, the, well, obviously it's a decision that I wouldn't have made because I didn't make that decision. Um, but if you don't need money, if you're made like, and you just want to chill and kind of do whatever. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Do you think Trey was good at charting or was that fake too? I mean, it's so this whole good at charting thing. It's so comically easy to chart. That's not, that's not a skill that I think is even like remarkable in the world of trading. You could take someone who has never seen a chart before, who has never traded before, and by the end of the weekend, they would be defined as a good charter. Like charting is comically easy. Um, so to me, that like has nothing to like, that's not a special thing like at all. Like it's, it's a very low level accolade to be a good charter. I mean, you're f fucking connecting highs and lows. It's support and resistance. It's gaps. It's volume profiles. It's literally all things that can be learned in one weekend of your life. You can do less than 10 hours of dedicated study and be considered a good charter. What's important is being a good trader. That's a wildly different thing. Just because you see something on a chart doesn't mean you properly execute it. What's your risk? What's your reward? Like there, that is like a completely different skill set. But just to be good at charting, like what the fuck? Like anyone, anyone could get it in a way. If you are here right now and you think like, oh man, I just need to be better at charting. I'm telling you, if you dedicate one weekend of your life to charting, you will be a phenomenally good charter. It's, there's just not that much to learn. How much do I bench? 
uh, what is today? Today's Monday. I benched yesterday. I did. I benched 205 yesterday. But it wasn't my max day. I say that as if I could do much more. Uh, I, I probably couldn't at this moment in time. If I were to bench my max, as judging how yesterday felt, it'd probably be like 215 right now. Mm, I used to be stronger. I mean, I, I'm not by any means saying that with glee. I mean, if you rewind, what am I? I'm 28 right now. If you rewind seven years, I was considerably stronger in all metrics and I was lighter. I could bench more. I could deadlift more. I could squat more. I was also probably faster. Yes. It not only in, so if you rewind seven years, I was lighter. I could bench more, squat more, deadlift more. I could sprint faster and I could run distance better as well. So basically in every metric, I was probably more physically fit. And I think that's just kind of what happens. Welcome to getting old. It's all downhill from there. Yeah. Um, do I want to take this? Let's do some expert charting. Oh my God. A lower high, a breakdown below the EMA. Um, I would be careful. Like typically I would want to do something here. Uh, but I'm not going to because don't forget that at 10 a.m., new home sales and consumer confidence. New home sales, we're looking at 675,000. Consumer confidence, we're looking at 104. That comes out at 10 a.m., so I'm not really interested in doing anything before that. You should also know that today, seasonally, is it is favoring the bears the bulls have won only 44 percent of the time with a profit factor below one at 0 0.45 every dollar spent uh has only returned 45 cents so that today does favor the bears uh we are about to get two reports coming out at 10 a.m i want you to know that walgreens reported and the numbers were not good Walgreens slash his earnings guidance due to lower consumer spending drop in Rona care demand. Walgreens slash its full year guidance to the range of about $4 from 445. Walgreens fiscal third quarter earnings missed analyst expectations for the first time since July of 2020. Not so good. What you could be consider it somewhat of a consumer defensive play. Not good when that is weakening. So yeah, I want to know what's going to be going on with Nike. Uh, kind of an interesting I suppose just barometer of the health of consumers. So I want to see what's going on there right here. Nike checking that out uh, after the market closes on Thursday, after the market closes today. If you're more of a semiconductor trader, you might be wanting to check out Mike Ron. All right, we had that, we had that. We covered Lordstown, Ugh, the death of a retail darling, darling. Should I cut that and like call that the video? The death of a retail darling. How many... AMC GME people do you think would freak out thinking it's about their stock? Will you be showing Rick when he comes out with the reports? I hope so. I hope he's reporting it. I very much do. Rick. Rick, Rick, Rick. They should be back soon. Back in the day, I could bench 445. Jesus. I think my highest ever was it like it wasn't even close to that my highest ever i think was 265 for one and that's when i was like really really going at it i was just never that good at benching like relative to my leg strength and my back strength i was like just benching wasn't my thing that's highly impressive 445 dude what are you a fucking gorilla man that is some serious strength all right what are we doing Have you tried getting rich on here? Serious question. What does that mean? Tried getting rich on here. I don't know what you're talking about, Joe. Have you tried getting rich on here? Serious question. I, Joe, what the fuck are you talking about? Is Rick your uncle? I would only be so lucky. There's probably a few people in this world who would be honored enough to say that they're related to Rick and uh, I'm jealous of them. I'm, I'm definitely jealous of them. Rich from TV. Have I tried to get rich? I've tried to run a business. I've tried to run a successful business. 
if that's what you mean. I mean, you see me day in and day out doing dumb option trades and every option trade I play is I'm like, yeah, I hope this has like a thousand percent return. Um, like, of course, of course I'm trading for money. What? That's why, wait, isn't that why we're all trading? Is anyone in here trading for a different reason beyond making money? I'm Joe, I'm thoroughly confused. I mean, that's, isn't that why we all trade stocks and crypto and options and future? Isn't the whole point to make money? <laughs> Blazy gal, she's like, oh, I'm trying to lose money. I, I try to give my money away to other people. I guess maybe we have all some like different opinions here on how we do it. I trade for morals. I have a gambling problem and don't want to drive two hours to a casino. Here, while we're waiting for this to get going, um, I think if you type in thick, the video should come up. Uh, exclamation point thick. Does that make it come up or does it not work? Thick. There we go. It does come up. If you do exclamation point thick, the new video on the new channel should come up. If you're on Rumble, you're already good. It's the normal channel on Rumble. Good Tuesday morning. Welcome to another hour of Squawk on the Street. I'm Carl Quintanilla with David Faber, Leslie Picker, live at Post 9. They better the give New us. Stock Exchange. Sarah's off on assignment ahead of this big panel she's got tomorrow in Portugal, where she will get the latest read on the consumer economy, sentiment economy, and new Fed home share, sales coming out. ECB president. Uh, spy popping up a little bit, popping 40 cents, 432.60, all the way up to 433. Let's see if it holds. Once again, the SP is coming off of five negative days and six and uh, quite a bit of data in the next few minutes. That's right, lots to get to here today. We're 30 minutes into the trading session here. Three big movers, we're watching shares of Walgreens plunging, the biggest laggard in the Dow this morning. The company slashing its full year guidance and reporting its first earnings miss since 2020. More on that name in just a moment. Plus some big calls on big tech. City raising its price target on Meta to $360 a share. That's a new street high as Bernstein downgrades Alphabet to neutral in a valuation call. You've got Meta up 2%, uh, Google parent company Alphabet down about 1%. And finally, Kellogg moving higher. The cereal maker upgraded to a buy at Goldman Sachs. Goldman says the stock is mispriced. I just did a YOLO call. Spy. Investors arguing the stock some spy is puts. sale at these levels. Investors spy 431 June 28th for tomorrow. I got in at 67 cents. Super degenerate. I don't think anyone else should be doing it because I'm just betting on this report. Big data here, Carl. If you're looking at the new home sales for the month of May, 760 higher than expected, leaping over 675,000. That was our estimate last month. Consumer confidence coming in higher than expected. This is the Jeez, best month over month number going all the way back to February of 22. And it comes at a time where what bank rate 30 year fix is slightly over 7%. Last week's MBA survey 30 year fix was six and three quarters. And Kay Schiller today dropped on their home pricing index to a seven-year wow. low. So some good news in housing. Now let's go to consumer confidence, shall we? 109.7 is our June read. 109.7. Welcome to the upside down the world. Best read good going stuff all is bad the way stuff. Back to January of 22. January of 22. Present situation, 155.3. That's the best since July of 21. And if we look at expectations, at 79.3, that is the best level of the year going back to December of last year. Now for some not so good news, Fed Manufacturing Index at minus seven is the sixth consecutive negative month over month change and on the service side for the Richmond Fed the 16th negative consecutive month in a row at minus 12. Now for more on new home sales big leap let's go to Diana Olick. Diana? Well, Rick, this is a huge number. As you said, the street was actually looking for a slight drop in May. One thing I want to know, market pop these are came down contracts. and now it's That's just like how these sideways sales are counted. So people out shopping for a home in May. If you take a look at mortgage rates the spy, during the month of May, is. they were around six and a half percent for the first half. Then Microsoft they shot looking markedly strong. higher to over Tesla 7% by the end of the month. 
So buyers are still in the game. We heard this from Lennar and KB Home last week in earnings reports that were much better than expected. A couple of notes on this. The median price of a newly built home sold in May was $416,300. That was actually down 7.6%. And the builders have been lowering prices slightly, going on? offering some incentives. But they did say they're offering fewer incentives lately than they had last fall. We're also seeing the supply of new homes for sale dropping to a 6.7-month supply. That from a 7.6-month supply in April. So the builders, again, are going to have to start putting more holes in the ground. And housing starts did increase. So that's a good sign. One more thing I want to wow. note is the number of homes that were versus sold but haven't been started yet has jumped really sharply, which just gives that long runway for the builders ahead. That's why you're seeing the stocks up as high as they are, because given the demand in the market now, the incredibly low supply of existing homes for sale, this is why the builders are reaping the benefits of it. And you see it right here. Despite the higher mortgage rates, buyers are still in the game. Carl? Market has confounded a lot of investors who thought that those rates would have more impact. Diana, thanks, uh, Diana Olick, this morning. Stocks rebounding here, reacting to some of that data a bit, despite yeah, still some still pretty much sideways. There are strong still pop, to the strong rally. drop, Earlier now this morning, sideways. Earlier Group CEO Seth Klarman told Squawk he still sees a downturn coming. Take a listen. I think we probably will have a downturn. The economy is slowing. Many sides of, of the inflation equation are coming under better control. Um, but the goal of the Fed is to reduce the heat in the Bitcoin economy looking good. and one way to do that is to trigger some kind ETH of recession. making a strong recovery it's too. Bitcoin just below 31,000. ETH that below, just below 1,900. pockets will start to run out around year end. So maybe it's an early 2024 event. Joining us this morning, Charles Schwab, Chief Investment Strategist, Lizanne Saunders. Lizanne, great to see What's you. What's Lizanne have uh, Just to say. on the data, I mean, the housing number, the confidence number, are you expecting maybe a new wave Not what of I was recession calls getting pushed back? Well, Carl, we've talked about this on your program before. Um, we think what we've been in really for a couple of years now Try to is some wick up, of a rolling recession. Smashed. And when you look watch at for the break. areas like or watch housing, for a new intraday low below 432.23. Um, they went into their recession-like uh, downturns, and and clearly in the case of housing, coming out. And and one of our theses around this rolling recession is that best case scenario is is not really soft landing in a traditional sense, but a continuation of the roll through such that at some point that services might start to get hit. And you're seeing some cracks there and or the labor market gets hit that you've got offsetting stability or strength in other areas, potentially like housing. And I just wrote about um, housing this week and uh, posted it's on our Schwab.com, but it's also on uh, my Twitter feed, so you can look into more detail. But uh, that's right now a positive uh, support, or at least an offset to some of where some of the pockets of now either in new uh, weakness posted or it's on, on our Schwab.com, but it's also right. on and that's what uh, was my Twitter to feed, in that so you can look into and the list is more sort detail. Of but familiar uh, by that's right now a positive uh, support, or at least an an offset Where's that to some of where some of the pockets from. of now either and, new uh, weakness or it's on our weakness. Weakness. Yeah, that's, right. also and on, that's what uh, Foreman was referring Twitter to in that Biden. So we, look into and the list is more sort detail, of but, familiar uh, by that's right now a positive uh, support or at least what's going on to some of where Sounds some of the pockets from. of now either and, new uh, weakness or it's on our weakness. And that's what Foreman was referring to in that Biden. We can too. And the list is sort of familiar by that's right now a positive support or at least what's going on. Stop it! 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 Stop I can't find it. Now either in where is, <laughs> where's my <laughs> open? That's what Foreman was right now. Was it that layout has an audio that I don't know where it's coming from? Folks, that was crazy. That was straight up fucking bananas, if you ask me. That was. I don't know. I don't know what that was, but Jesus. We breaking down. Hang on. I want some Tesla.
Okay. Uh, so here are my positions from just today, just to keep you guys a little bit in the loop. So I just picked up some Tesla 230s for July 7th. Uh, and basically my reasoning for that is just Tesla. I'm wondering if it'll break down right here. Uh, kind of a, a low risk entry. I could just risk 247 if I so choose. I see the queues breaking down. I see Microsoft turning. Uh, Apple, I assume, is turning. So I'm just trying to play this trend line breakdown. Uh, would love to see Tesla quickly vomit to 240. Why not? Like, seems like a pretty easy risk reward setup. Basically, risking two dollars to get five dollars. So, uh, two and a half to one. I'm gonna I'm gonna take that risk reward. I I don't know if it will or won't break down, but I'm seeing some weakness. Um, the spies at the end of its wedge just made a new fresh low. But this is, I mean, I do want to hammer home this concept of we we keep seeing these fake flushes. Uh, so I don't know if it's real or not. So something I'm definitely paying attention to. If we come here, did I want to do it on this? Yeah. Uh, I'm just seeing this kind of shelf level. We have a shelf here. This is where everything wicked to this morning. Uh, I'd feel better if the futures market gets below 4,375. We're at 79. So I kind of want to set an alert there. Uh, that would make me feel far better about all of my positions. I am seeing weakness. That's why not only did I get this Tesla position, which I'm keeping my risk in control. Uh, it's all risk reward setup. It's all risk management. But then I did some dumb yellow stuff right here. Um, instead of a zero DTE, I did a one DTE June 28th, 431. So this is for tomorrow. Uh, I got in at 67. They're trading at 80. Just a little bit of degeneracy fun just to keep the stream, I guess, excited and you guys jacked up. So you could yell at me, be like, why didn't you get out? Uh, when I invariably, like, uh, inevitably, I should say, uh, lose money. I guess invariably would have also worked there. Um, so a little bit of my degenerate play for the day and then kind of a, a little bit of a shorter term swing. Like I wouldn't mind holding this Tesla 230 for a little bit just to see if I can catch that. Uh, if Tesla does show quite a bit of weakness today, I do want to point out in terms of risk reward, there's a nice gap fill at 235. Okay, the ES is breaking down. I do want to see 235, a nice, nice gap fill. I don't know why I have so many of these on top. So many, so many. Clean up, clean up, clean up. Um, so if it stays below 247, that's another important level. Would love to see the gap fill on Tesla at 235.23. Um, if it comes today, that'd be phenomenal. I'm not That's not necessarily my base case, but we'll see how things go. Um, the SPY, I mean, it's getting a little slashed there, but not a real puke by any means. By any means. IEP still holding above two or twenty six dollars. I just don't get how IEP is not showing any legitimate weakness. Um, I would love to see the spy test two or four thirty one, the low from yesterday. Um, so I'm feeling good that we're kind of messing around at this four three seven five level. Uh, the fact that we hit it once, okay, good, but maybe people are just dip buying it. Uh, so just watching some of these recent lows that unfortunately we've been contending with. Uh, but not in that nice plummet that I want. But that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, I'm attempting to have good risk reward management. I say attempt and I use that very, very lightly. Let's do the spy. Let's throw up the Keltner. I want the Keltner. I want to exit these better because remember, when you're outside of the Keltner, that's a statistically abnormal move. Uh, so maybe it's time that I just say, hey, thanks for that money and move on. I mean, I'm up 2K. That's not a bad fucking deal. Or it was up 2K. See how just quickly it moves against you on any little retraction? The Q's just made a fresh low. The SPY already did. Microsoft vomiting a little bit. Apple turning over. Where's Tesla at? Tesla, I want below 241. Uh, I'm looking at the opening low of 240.85. Uh, and this shows, uh, I think, the clear importance of waiting for those reports to come out. Uh, if you got in early, you would have had to like ride through this. If you're bullish or, or bearish, it doesn't matter. If you were, were bearish uh, to this point, AKA correct, you would have had to hold through all of this. Well, if you were bullish, yeah, it worked. And then the report came out and you got smashed. Like, so we, when there are quote unquote important reports coming out at 10 AM, I really, really, really think it's advantageous to wait for the report to come out. You don't have to be predictive. You can make enough money off being reactive. And more importantly than that, you can control your risk. And I mean, there's many, many opportunities every single day across the entire market. 
I like to look at the overall market just because I think more people are trading that than some of these like obscure individual names, but it, it doesn't matter. Like a bar chart's a bar chart. It's always reward to your risk. Like how much reward is there? How much risk is there? And then are you disciplined to stick to your particular ratio? Um, not liking this bounce because I assume that drove me no i'm actually still up i'm in at 67 they're trading at 78 right now 77 uh i hope this isn't a fake out which it very might well be i should have just taken that money and moved on with my fucking life what a fucking bounce is this uh surprise surprise if you look at it right off the bottom of the keltner channel this is a these bands are a two standard deviation move of the atr um so statistically unlikely and that's a lot of the times why you see these pushes out of it it gets sm smacked right back down into it we could hide the 20 for now yeah this is the 20 uh wait what are actually my inputs right now 22 close okay so yeah it's two standard deviations and the moving average the simple moving average is uh, a length of 20 is that middle line but we come right out to the other side of the band, comes back up to the medium. I hope it gets rejected, but sometimes it can rip right to the other side. I mean, who knows? Who knows? Anything is possible. What I was actually really looking for, I was actually really close to taking some of my money on this. Uh, I was looking for a close outside of the Keltner channel, like the way we saw a close right here or another close right there, or technically one, two, three, four. We had four in a row. I was thinking, oh, okay, like we're going to kind of mirror some sort of this like extreme movement uh, after a consolidation, a breakdown. I thought we were going to get a couple closes on the outside. And on that, I was going to take some or all of my money off the table. Unfortunately, we wicked just below it twice. The three min didn't even get there. So on the one minute, yeah. So I don't, I don't mind this hold. Obviously, it's currently going against me, which is a bit of a bummer. Uh, maybe I got a little bit trapped there, or maybe we get a hardcore rejection. Time will tell. Time will tell. Time will tell. What is going on with my nightbot? Night, my nightbot is having an issue right now. Nightbot, login. Uh, timers, edit, edit, uh, my nightbot, I don't understand what's going on with this website. Okay. I think it should be fixed. I think it should be fixed. I think it should be fixed. Can anyone do the exclamation point thick? It should be bringing up this. Um, I'm obviously just trying to sh let you know that they're, for the evergreen content on YouTube, it's now separated uh, on Rumble. You don't have to worry about it, but here's the video. The secrets of successfully trading options with hedge fund manager, David Sun. Uh, I think you're really, really going to enjoy this. Here's the channel, 547 subs. It's new. We have one interview with Tom Nash, one interview with David Sun. Uh, check it out. It's in the description of the video. If you do dollar sign or excuse me, exclamation point thick, it should bring up the link for you. And thick is T-H-I-C-C. -C. So if you want to save this video, if you want to watch it now, it's a good interview. We talk about options trading strategies. We talk about a story. Retail trader turned into a hedge fund manager, turned into a hedge fund manager two times over. It is also on Rumble. If you don't want to watch it on YouTube, it's, it's the same title and everything. You can find it on Rumble under my content, under the normal channel. It's just a little bit more difficult to navigate to if you are on YouTube because it's under this channel now. Uh, or you could just go at Matthew Kors if you want to find it, but it's all in the description of the video. Fuck. What are we doing? Uh, why are we not breaking down? Why are we not breaking down? Fuck. Brutal fake out. Brutal. Barely makes a new low. Barely makes a new low. Officially makes a clear new low. I mean, we went from 432 to 25. I mean, it broke it down by about 50 cents. 
and then it pops up a whole dollar. Like these, these liquidity grabs, like just so many people having their stop losses, they get it to flush below and then they just rip it against them. It's brutal, but it's also a pattern that if you start to notice it, the better you're going to be at actually handling it because of Apple. I mean, Apple did the same thing. Look at right here, Apple. 186.47 comes all the way down, gets this breakdown to 186.23, breaks down by about 25 cents. They bounce it right out. Uh, Tesla, same thing, breaks below 244, comes down to 243, breaks down by a dollar, and they bounce it all the way out to 246. They bounce it by two bucks. Uh, the Qs, it's more evident in the tech sector, broke its intraday low at 258.77. And look at this, uh, they bounce it 20, like it flush by 25 cents, they bounce it right back out. Uh, tech is seemingly the weakest today. It, it gapped up the best, so that's why its percentage is higher than the SPY. The Qs are basically up by 0.4%, while the SPY is up by only 03 But the recovery is much more muted. I mean, look at this. The Qs barely got a bounce, barely got a bounce, but the SPY got a much more considerable bounce out of this. Um, so we'll see. Uh, patience. I, I'm not on the intraday based on everything going on. I'm still in the bearish camp for today. I know about seasonality. I see two fresh breakdowns of recent lows and we haven't made a new high. So all I can really go on right now from price action is the fact that me, we made lower highs and lower lows. The worst situation is where you like say on the spy, you break 433. It goes above it, which it looks like it's about to do. And then it gets knocked there because you no longer have consolidation with lower highs and lower lows. Now you have a microphone, which is like by far the most difficult bullshit to trade. When you have higher highs and higher lows, it, you're just getting whipped up and getting whipped down. It's very choppy. Uh, whenever I see a microphone environment, I do my best just to completely avoid it. When you have higher highs and lower lows, as in your extremes are getting more extreme, it, it's trappy, it's whipsaw, it's bullshit. It's complete bullshit. Uh, I hate trading it. If you see that on whatever time frame you're trading, I, I truly believe the best thing you can do is just be like, okay, cool. I'm not trading it for right now. It, it's just not the environment. Like, um, I believe in those environments, your odds of success are, they're just low. So like, why do it? Um, what are you, yo, Grace, just chill out. Grace money, you're going to get yourself a timeout. You're just like screaming about random things. Matt, do you like Rivian and EV? I have known they're not profitable, but what are your thoughts on long-term? I'm seeing a lot of other vehicles here in the Midwest. I mean, seeing vehicles or not, that like sometimes can be a little bit connected to its uh, fundamentals, but I'm not the biggest fan of it. Like I have gone a little bit into Rivian's fundamentals, but it's the same thing as like Lucid. Like they're the new kid on the block and it's just not the best environment for like new kids to be successful. Like if I'm playing an EV play, I'm going to, play the one that's proven and successful and dominates the auto making market as in Tesla. And even right now, I'm not like, I mean, I own Tesla, my long-term account, but you see that I have puts like, I'm not buying things when I think the overall market is not looking the best, especially companies that clearly need money. They clearly need people buying their product with extra disposable income. So like, to me, I just, in the short term, I don't know how things could be going well for the players like such as Rivian and Lucid, where they're hyper, hyper dependent on people having excess income. Excess income in an environment when our Federal Reserve is actively trying to slow down the economy. Uh, I mean, I've seen their trucks. They seem cool. Like, I'll, I'll give them that. Like, I, I like the looks and everything. It's just like, they're the small guy on the block. And like, I just don't know if the economic situation is necessarily like supportive of what they're attempting to do. Uh, all right. All right, all right, all right. Do you think the spy is going to break down here? Because if so, this is probably my environment to get a couple more. I'm not going to be too dumb. I just need, I need a little bit of a downturn. I, I'm seeing weakness in the queues. Uh, now my Weevil is just not opening. Strange. 
strange, strange, strange. Uh, nope. Spy breaking out. So maybe it's just time for me to cut. Dude, why? My weeble is just disappearing on me. I can't keep the screen open. Um, I'm just closely watching, ideally, a smack at 433. But I don't know. The cues are catching a bit now. We have Apple picking up a bit. We have Tesla going sideways, so not really moving there. We have... Mm, what the fuck is this? Uh, Microsoft dipped. All right, praying for a smack. Praying for a smack. And are we going to get one? All right, lowered my average from 67 to 63, trading at 56. So I'm not that far off. Um, just lowered it a little bit because I'm hoping that this is just a range bound rejection here at 433 key technical level, key psychological level. Um, obviously this could be the start of strength, but for me, I don't have to carry much risk because if I'm wrong on this, where I average down, well, my cut points close. So like it, it's obviously a trade that I don't want to take a loss on. I don't want to take a loss on any of my trades, but in terms of risk reward, I think, okay, if I'm in additionally at 433 and I have to risk 30 cents, but then the down, like my upside target, which would be the spy coming down, would be 431.88, the risk reward's favorable. The odds of this playing out for me in the realm of 50%. I, I think it's safe, and this obviously isn't always true, but you should probably assume that, like, I mean, without doing hardcore mathematical modeling, most of your trades are going to be 50-50. Like that's just how a lot of the time the market plays out for whatever time frame you're on, especially the shorter time frame stuff. You're in the world of 50-50. You flip a coin, it might hit heads, might hit tails. You should kind of assume that half your trades you're going to lose. So once again, if you're losing half your trades, the way for you to be profitable is always good risk reward. Your reward should be arguably like a uh, like multiples above whatever you're risking. And then even if you're hitting with 50, 50 accuracy, well, that's why your winners pay off for your losers. So with this, I just look for these opportunities. I'm like, okay, cool. I don't have to risk that much. Granted, I don't know if it's going to work. I think about 50, 50, like I'm sure there is a situation where I can model three minute charts and kind of better model today and blah, blah, blah. And I bet the math would still be roughly, roughly in the realm of 50, 50. So with this, I give myself a flip of a coin, but the way you can survive in your account doing this over and over again is obviously pay attention to risk and reward. But another thing that maybe we don't speak too, too much about, and maybe for like my hardcore trading studiers in here, you'd be a little bit more familiar with the criteria, um, the K factor, the Kelly Kelly criterion. I think it's Kelly criterion is what you would want to search. Um, so Kelly criterion, uh, and that's all about bet sizing. So not only when I say risk reward as in that individual trade, but the size of the bet itself relative to your account, because even if you're dealing with a 50, 50 thing, if you're betting half your account, three quarters of your account, like some huge percentage, I mean, mathematically, it's just amount of time before you blow up. That's not a sustainable thing. Uh, a lot of people using like, betting methodology, Kelly, Kelly criterion. I mean, they're risking about 2% of their account. I know some strategies go up to five. I know some more conservative ones go down to one. Um, my biggest issue right now, like if you were to like look at my relative accounts or my bet size relative to my account size is I'm betting too large per bet. Really, you would have to have a phenomenally good reason to ever be risking more than 5% of your overall account. And once again, this is all through the lens of just like a series of bets. You're never really, really looking at one individual bet. You're looking at a series of these individual bets that all meet certain criteria. And that's how you get a positive expected um, value. Um, expectancy hacking and um, also for people who sell premium premium capture rate those are things that we dove into in this interview watch it on rumble watch it on youtube uh, but right here if you just search matt cores david sun or just youtube.com at matthew cores it's in the description of the video you can check it out we get into more detail in this talk right here uh, with that hedge fund manager all right i am praying that the market turns right here 
praying, praying, praying. Kelly Blue Book, it's kind of like that. How is Walgreens doing? Uh, is it still getting rocked? Walgreens. Uh, WBA, I did not know that off the top of my head. Down 9.5% right now. WBA, not having the best of days. Here's a look at the daily chart. Oh, brother. That is what happens when you lower your guidance and also miss on analysts. Getting a little bit murked. What's popping right now across the board? Is it just text popping a little bit? Uh, so we see healthcare, uh, once again, a continuation in the red of healthcare over here. Uh, and then, yeah, some uh, my, Microsoft, Apple, some of these big tech plays, Tesla, Amazon, Google, uh, Google's red meta. Here, let's take a quick sneak peek at some of these. Google, Google down. Uh, breaking actually below its consolidation and getting an EMA crossover. Rut row, not so good for Google. Google might be heading to this downside gap fill at 112.94. Maybe worthwhile to throw on your list. Tesla, it broke down below that 247. I still like this gap fill play at 235. And my estimation is just a question of when, not really if. Uh, Apple, once again, just crazy fucking strong at 187. Look at like, I, I just don't get who the fuck is buying Apple. Blows my mind. Who would be buying this company at an all-time high? I, I just don't get it. I don't get it for traders. I don't get it for investors. I, it just is something that makes no sense to me. Apple, or excuse me, Amazon, just kind of mid-range, not really doing anything today. Meta, the exact same situation. Uh, NVIDIA, a little weak on NVIDIA. NVIDIA got rocked yesterday. Uh, coming up to this key technical and psychological level around 400. Micron has earnings after Thursday, has been looking a little bit weak. Intel, mid-range, I don't know. AI was breaking down. Yeah, it's been breaking down. The beautiful play on AI, C3 AI was right here, like between 42 and 44. This was a beautiful short play, put play. I completely missed it. I know some of you in here got it. Uh, I hope you crushed it, but man, I, I'm mad that I missed that play. Just slipped my mind. AVGO uh, finding support right previously at resistance right here at 821. Look at rejection, 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 support, support, support. Once an important level tends to be an important level. AVGO is showing you that right now. Checking in on crypto, Bitcoin just below 31,000, ETH just below 1,900. The recent crypto push holding up, maybe a couple signs of continuation. Um, do, 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 do. Let me hide the Keltner for now because we're not really looking at an extreme movement. We'll throw this, but we'll also throw up this. Um, so looking for this MACD to cross over. I have in the past worked on some strategies instead of the crossover because sometimes when you wait for the crossover, you're a little late for the party. Uh, but I have worked on, instead of making, like obviously if it crosses down, you'd either go short or get out. And if it crosses upward, that would be a sign to go long. But even right here, if you wait for this crossover, it would come at 1016 when, I mean, that's kind of far away from the actual bottom. So I have, have I've worked on some strategies. Unfortunately, I didn't have the most success of waiting for either the MACD to grow, 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 and then waiting for two of it coming back. See how the MACD got bigger, 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 and then the lighter green. I wait for the second one where it stepped down. So basically the short would have occurred at 941 or right here, instead of waiting for this to actually cross, you would have got out at this point, uh, like two in the opposite direction, not necessarily across, but it's getting more and more bearish. And then I look for like just two steps of left bearish. So right here, uh, more and more and more and more bearish, but then boom, right here, two steps of being less bearish. So like just a slightly better entry. Now, when I did the back testing on this, it didn't produce the results that I really thought it would. I... <sighs> I think there's still something there. So I have to, I don't know, be a little bit more creative or maybe handle like the risk a little bit better. But I think there's something there. Instead of waiting for the MACD to cross, to wait for, but like the the issue with this is on choppy days. That's where I really ran into the problem on this particular trading strategy is days like, or examples right here, where sometimes there's a nice, beautiful trend. Boom, 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 great. You get out right there 
all right so you rode it up like you got in at this point back here you get out right there you got the meat of the move you move on with your life the issue is is you're not really ever guaranteeing nice beautiful trends up and nice beautiful trends down sometimes you get like an absolute choppy mess uh, let me find like right here this was a little bit more choppy this crap in here so uh it like i really think it's promising it, it's just more of i need to refine it a bit more did something just come out why the fuck did we just get randomly a huge pop in the spy what just happened what is this uh do i need to cut I'm very, very confused at what just happened. Is there breaking news? Uh, what time is it? 1034, 1031. Uh, Texas service sector outlook for June minus 8.2 instead of 7.3 last time. Dallas Fed service revenues for June 3.6 versus 6.0 estimate. Richmond Services Index for June, a drop of three. The estimate was seven. Richmond Manufacturing Shipments for June, minus five instead of minus 13. Prior Richmond Manufacturing for June, minus seven versus minus 10 as an estimate. Uh, actually, no. Only the Dallas one was the one that just came out. Excuse me. Pardon me. All those other ones were out at 10 and 10.02 and 10.03. The 10.30 report was Dallas Fed Service Revenues for June, 3.6 versus 6.0 estimate so dallas fed service revenues came down more than expected why would that have such an impact on the market texas services outlook for june minus 8.2 versus 7.3 a loss of 7.3 last time around uh feels like that's a report that shouldn't cause such a reaction uh i find that surprising for sure strange uh, Tesla's now not doing shit sideways consolidation the Q's fortunately for me are just not catching that much of a bid um man that pop just came out of nowhere right here at 10.33, just someone bought it all up. Or probably some out. Yeah, even on volume too. A little bit of a volume pop. Golly. Golly, golly, golly. Well, on the plus side, that means that if we come below this 82.75, at, I say plus side for me. Uh, I have no idea what your positions are. Um, if we have this order block of just buying, 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 and it's like kind of a fictitious breakout, like they try to wick it up, but it just gets smacked. If we come back down below 8275, I'd feel pretty freaking confident about the position then. But even though today's seasonally bearish, I also fully understand that I'm fighting the trading methodology of turnaround Tuesday. So I think from like classically held ideas, you have seasonality in contradiction today of what in the world is going on with turnaround Tuesday. So uh, definitely some conflicting schedules. Uh, so I, I mean, conflicting signals, excuse me. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Well, I just want the spy to stay below 433. That would be a nice win, a nice win. Oil, what's oil been doing? Oil wicking down, but staying at 69. Wicking down, staying at 69, NVIDIA, Tesla, Shopify, IP, like wants to break down, but just refuses to, which is incredibly frustrating. Uh, some would say beyond frustrating. I might have to lower my risk on IP. It's just not moving the way I want it to. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely set an alert, probably going to end up becoming my new risk on IP at 2875 for those uh that july play would love for it to crack 24 but it seems like it's having the worst time getting below 26 the absolute worst time uh not much going on a little bit some in the short time frame we're seeing a little bit of craziness a little bit of wicking here and there but 
nothing too nuts. Let's clean up the chart a little bit. Clean up the chart a little bit. All right, so I just very much want to see the SPY come below 432.60. I want to see the Qs stay below this trend line. I'd love to see Tesla break, but it's just consolidating sideways as it has been ever since 10.12, so consolidating roughly half an hour, just under half an hour. I'd prefer that Apple come below 186.23, but it, it just very, very, very much feels like I'm... Like, Apple, I, I don't know who's buying it. I'm particularly interested to see the 13F reports come out so I can see, like, someone this quarter has had to be loading up on Apple. Like, the money, money ain't free. It's coming from somewhere. Uh, ENVX. So I'm not, I haven't been, like, the most informed on the whole ENVX world. Uh, I know a lot of people are supporting it quite a bit. I don't have any of it. I'm... I, don't know, I guess I view it as another learning opportunity. I see a higher low, potentially a double top, looking for that to break out. The real test would come at 57. At 57, you actually have like a fair value gap up to 59, 69. So it looks like the recent trend has been favoring the bulls. Higher highs and higher lows. Well, higher highs now double top, but higher lows. So if it can break, um, you do have another resistance pretty close by it, only a dollar higher at 57, but above that, you could be talking about 60. Oh wait, this is ENV, ENVX. Well, ENV, um, oh, this is the breakout. I thought we did more of a breakdown on this. Uh, let's get rid of this one. Uh, triple top right here at 1550. You could also fairly argue a cup and a handle. Cup, handle, uh, kind of a weird looking one, but you're knocking on the door of a breakout. I don't like buying breakouts, but hey, this one, if you're okay with taking on a risk of 1278 trading at 1540, uh, I would be looking at this upside target of 1777, the gap that we saw from Tuesday, November 1st of 22. So risk reward, I mean, I I'm not the biggest fan of it. If you got in earlier, like, I mean, there was a beautiful entry this morning right at 14 targeting 1777 but i mean the momentum's bullish it's just i i do question the current risk reward i definitely do um i don't know if the spy is about to rip off my face or if it's about to turn back over and pay me handsomely but we'll find out come on just turn all of a sudden i mean look at this just like it all just kind of dried up like we got strange bursts of volatility and nice movement and nice trends, and now we're barely moving at all, which is, I, I suppose, better than it dramatically moving against me, so I can't complain too much. Well, as I say that, it starts to potentially dramatically move against me. Watching the cues, man brutal fake out breakdown today arguably caught me in it i was really thinking i'm like okay great we're snapping 432 we're snapping 432.25 we're testing 431 uh i mean it was that trading plan that i kind of explained to everyone before the market opened i was like okay we're looking for this breakdown here's my test um just got trapped in it got trapped in it got trapped in it and here we are sam becoming a bot fighter Shout out. Welcome. Come on. I just need the cues to get smacked. If the cues can get below 359, I'd be happy. Apple 186.23. Tesla below 243. All right. A little bit of selling coming in. A little bit of selling. There we go. There we go. Um, but We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, how many of you, my, my quick question for you, uh, whether on rumble or YouTube, uh, I think YouTube or Apple doesn't like me resub Sam. I appreciate that. Thank you for the support. Uh, quick question for you folks, uh, whether you watch it on YouTube or on rumble, uh, out of the people of who watched that sunny interview that came out yesterday. I'm just curious if you have any feedback or like, just like maybe, uh, uh is there any critical feedback that you'd be like, Hey, like, I kind of wish you did this way. Or is there like a person you want me to interview next? Or like, 
Um, are, are there different questions you want me to ask? Is there a different way you want me to edit it? Uh, I'm looking for any feedback just to kind of attempt to take them to the next level um, on that video that came out yesterday with David's son. Uh, let me get up. All right, I had to reload the Rumble chat. Haven't had a chance, Will, tonight. Looking forward to it. Okay, sweet. And uh, obviously, folks, don't hold back. We're attempting uh, chaos. My producer and I are attempting just to make the best like interviews we possibly can. Um, interview Meet Kevin on PP. Uh, I kind of want to interview Meet Kevin. Uh, obviously, I could ask him about the ETF, but I kind of wanted to just get like his story and his like favorite trading setups and this, that, and the other thing. Interview Kenny Boy. I don't think Ken Griffin uh, would re respond to me at all. Uh, have your guests sit on a black leather couch in your office. Interesting. Try to interview the best traders. Get Nancy Pelosi. Have you heard of Nardwar? Uh, he interviews rappers, right? And he's like known for like, for some reason, knowing a crazy amount of information about them. Charles Payne, you know, I've attempted multiple times to set up an interview with Charles Payne and he said yes. And then I like, it just doesn't come. Like he just doesn't respond to me. Um, it's interesting because he responds at first and he's like, yeah, yeah, would love to do it. And then it just doesn't happen. And I assume it's just because he's a crazy busy guy, but I've actually been trying to interview Charles Payne for a couple of years just to get his backstory, um, to learn more about how he got into trading, how he views trading, how he views investing. Don't Ken sign your checks asking for Reddit. I mean, <sighs> some of the conspiracy theory stuff, like they're just so fucking stupid. So stupid. Uh, So, so dumb. I saw that, what was it? Doug Sifu was arguing with people. Uh, Doug Sifu is the CEO of Virtu. I don't think he's the founder of it. I think he ended up taking it over. Uh, but which is the second largest market making. And he can't, he's like Gasparino. He can't not fight with people from the ape community. And I just think I'm like, dude, don't you have like better things to do with your life? Like, aren't you just rich? Uh, interview humble trader. She would be interesting. That's a good suggestion. I very much appreciate that. Ooh, retracted super chat. I like the, I like the mystery interview. Dave Portnoy. He might be just a little bit too big for my poll right now. Maybe one day in the future, uh, maybe if his life calms down a little bit, because to my understanding, he's like slowly but surely getting out of Barstool over the next couple of years, it seems like. Uh, so maybe one of these days, if he's less busy and I'm, I don't know, have a better poll, it might be able to pull it off. Man, the spy almost got below 433 and then someone bought it right back up. Why run down 11 from 11 and think it'll go back up soon? I don't know why it's it's down because that's what the market says right now. People are uh, agreeing to buy and sell it at a less of a value. It's, there's no big uh, update. There's no like announcement. It's more of trading action. The current buyers and sellers are agreeing that rum is trading at nine bucks. Uh, do I think it'll go back up? I do. Um, that's obviously no guarantee, but I'm invested in it. I'm... I don't really care what rum does in the next week, month, or year. I'm invested in rum. I would sell it if there was a huge squeeze, and then I would take all of my profits and just rebuy it in at a lower cost. Uh, but barring that event, I'm just simply invested in it. Uh, interview TJ Trades. I've never heard of that uh, account or that person. I'll definitely look into it. TJ Trades, Humble Trader. I like these. Dave Lauer. So I was actually thinking of uh, Dave, because I know with Dave, we've done like a lot of informational things, but I think what would be interesting with Dave is actually talking about him, like with him about trading. Like, I don't think anyone's really publicly discussed that with Dave and I have privately a little bit and he actually has like a pretty cool, like story related to his own trading and all of that. And I thought that'd be cool rather than just like, um, like almost like a college-esque lecture on like what dark pools are or are. Uh, Matt, bullish or bearish? What color are your Bugatti? Am I bullish or bearish on the market? I'm bearish on the market. What color Bugatti? If I had a Bugatti, like if I was just magically given a Bugatti and I got to pick the color, I'd probably just go with like black. Maybe like matte black. Uh, 
Uh, TJ Trade, trust me, he's a big TikToker, 21 and worth eight figures. Um, man, right away that gives me flags. Like that sets off serious red flags. Andrew Huberman, Anthony Pompliano. I might be able to pull off Anthony Pompliano. Andrew Huberman would be like way too big for me at this moment. Um, but coming back to this 21 year old who's worth eight figures, fucking how? Like I, I just simply don't buy it. Actively trading is extraordinarily difficult. It takes years to master that craft. How is someone mastering that craft at the age of 21? I, I just don't like, <clears throat> it's not um, impossible. It's just statistically incredibly unlikely, incredibly unlikely. I mean, already upwards of 90% of active retail traders lose money as in out of all retail traders, including people who attempt to retail trade for years and years and years, only 10% are successful. And then you want me to think that a 21 year old who at max has only been trading for a couple of years is not only successful, but hyper successful. Uh, it just, and maybe I'm wrong. I don't know anything about him at all, but right away, it just sounds like it's more of like a, a social media, like clout type of a thing. Let me look him up. You said he's on TikTok? No. No. Oh, wait, the account I'm looking at only has 22 followers. You said that he is, he's way bigger. I might be on the wrong account. Fuck. Well, might have to be cutting my position pretty soon. Actually, I get to keep the Tesla one, though. But uh, the dumb trade, the little D-Gen trade, looks like it's going bust. Uh, I'm trying to see. Now I'm distracted by this person. Everything I'm seeing about this person is like 20 followers. So I don't think this is the person you're talking about. Looks like... Uh, I, I don't think I can properly find the account that you're tracking. Fake out, break out? Do we fake out, break out to the breakdown to the downside? Fake out, break out to the upside? The old twofer? Or is it actually going to rip here? Apple's just sideways. Tesla's a little bit weaker. Microsoft to the downside. Amazon's to the downside. Google's turning back around, but it was also down. Uh, gap down. Tesla, Meta. Meta's picking up. Meta, uh, same high, triple high, but higher lows. This is a strong, strong formation on Meta intraday. Um, if I see these on larger time frames where basically it's the same high, one, two, three, like the fourth test, but higher lows, think about what this means psychologically. Um, once I'm not like the biggest fan of it on the three minute, just because in short time frames, like there's a lot of randomness. Uh, but think about what this means. Let me draw all this. Okay. So when you see this situation, basically it means, okay, the bears took a stand at 284.65. They took a stand there again successfully. They took there again successfully. But remember, bears or bulls, no one has infinite money. So if you are continually like getting out there, or even if profit takers are continually selling there, it's just like at a certain point, you have to wonder like how much liquidity is there, like eventually it dries up. But then on the other side, the bulls are getting more aggressive. So the bears are staying at the same level. Um, and I'm defining bears in this situation as either the bulls taking their money because it's still bearish if they're selling there or shorts actually entering. But then on the flip side, the bullish camp, either shorts getting out or getting weaker or the bulls buying are getting stronger. So there's the same bearish momentum here. Smack, 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 same level. But on the flip side, the bulls are getting more aggressive 
because they're buying it earlier each time it dips it dips less it dips less uh so there's a clear aggression imbalance the the bearish side is saying the same aggression level while the bulls are getting more aggressive so then you're basically looking for the breakout and the hold and ideally you could just risk the recent low so um not much risk and then relative to your reward i mean i don't know what the reward would be here you'd have to look at other charts but i do want to point out when you get this step up pattern um it's kind of a strong one and actually i could give you the odds of these working out uh this one is this technically a triangle this might technically be a triangle or it could be a bull flag you're you're dealing in the realm of 70 percent accuracy in the realm of 70 percent of the time working it out rich remember head and shoulders um according to samurai whatever the fuck that like data analytics company is apparently head and shoulders is the highest uh technical setup highest accuracy technical setup coming in at 83 percent and oddly enough uh bullish and bearish pennants you know like when you're trading down and then you make a triangle you're trading up and you make a triangle uh those are kind of like the fake out ones where they only work 55 percent of the time so a slight improvement on flipping a slight improvement on flipping a quarter but i'm hoping that we don't get the breakout on meta i'm hoping this is a fake out i'm more so watching the cues i don't know what the spy is doing i don't know why the spy is overperforming today uh is it da, 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 is it oil again nope not really oil what subsector is performing airlines are doing well but that airlines aren't important enough we talked about buying luv at 30 it's currently up at almost 35 you're up over 10 percent. not bad at all uh luv ual yeah airlines crushing it and it's because delta gave out some information of their earnings and it looks pretty freaking strong uh i must admit oh what are we at what sector is strong financials not jp morgan Morgan Stanley's up 0.7%. Bank of America is up 0.9. Goldman Sachs is up 0.2. Like, they're not, like, they're doing all right. They're in the green. But nothing, nothing like wild. Mm, is it, it wasn't semiconductors, was it? No. No. Micron making a bit of a pushback. I don't know where this buying strength is coming from. Doesn't really add up to me, team. Healthcare? Mm, kind of flat. Is it... Someone just said RCL. Royal Caribbean? So cruise lines? So travel seems to be up. So if we look at cruises, if we look at uh, airlines, so the travel industry seems to be doing well, but not at, like the travel industry isn't big enough to be keeping up the spy when Tesla's looking weak, when Meta's getting a failed breakout, when Apple potentially breaking down. Um, I mean, I guess Apple's not hurting it. A lot of tech is maybe going sideways right now. So if we have some players going sideways and then a smaller players going up, that might help the SPY bleed to the upside. I, I suppose that's fair because we are seeing on a relative basis weakness in the queues. Is it just the small cap sector? Um, IWM. Small caps ripping right there. Shares of the Russell 2000. Um, interesting. Which technically isn't the SPY if we want to be specific about it. You have what's called the Russell 3000. And within the Russell 3000, that's like just whatever, 3,000 of the, the just the biggest, most influential companies in the U.S. stock market. The bottom 2,000 of the 3,000 is the Russell 2000. So then if you look at the top 1,000, the top 500 of that is the S&P 500. And under that, you have the S&P 400 mid cap. So it goes, and then also between the S&P 500, you also have within that, commonly within that is the nasdaq but it doesn't always have to be so basically you have the big old chunk of the russell 3000 the top part of it i guess you could argue is the dow 
then you have really the NASDAQ, which there's not the most overlap there, but all of that is commonly within the S&P 500. And then below the S&P 500, you have the S&P 400 mid cap. And below the S&P 400 mid cap, you have the Russell 2000, which is the bottom 2000 of the overall Russell 3000. Um, lots of just chunks in there. Defense. I mean, we see some buying for sure. Uh, Bank of America, Bank of America finance is doing good. Uh, what about Boeing? Boeing's doing all right. What's Lockheed Martin? Lockheed LMT. I should have known that. Mm, that's not doing the best. Uh, Raytheon technologies. Mm, I mean, it's a bit of a recovery. Nothing too crazy. I mean, I'm very impressed with the Russell 2000 right now. I mean, this has just been nonstop. Small cap has been crushing it. Meta even turning back around. Maybe not a fake out breakdown. NVIDIA week. Netflix? Ooh, Netflix vomiting. Uh, I was a little early to take my profits on that, but I'm still happy I did. I'd be under right now. Fuck, the spy is still going? Interesting. Even, I mean, Tesla, this is what I was talking about right here. Look at this brutal fake out breakdown. We come right below a low. You know, people are going to have their stops there. They flush it. This has definitely been the going methodology that's just been so incredibly apparent for the past couple of weeks now. Like, it's just it's always been an aspect of trading obviously like i'm not saying oh like oh these liquidity flushes are a new thing but i'm just saying like every single day they're just so in our face about it uh you're seeing it on major etfs such as the spy and the Qs. you're seeing it on some of the biggest tech names you're seeing on some of the biggest like just whatever names in the doubt like just these flushes man i mean even look at microsoft right here from this low they flush it they break it down, they flush it, and then they pop it right back out. Granted, this time we're now back in the zone on Microsoft, but we're we're just seeing flushes all the time, man. Uh, Yahoo Finance, why we should be looking at small cap. Did Yahoo shove the market to the upside? Uh, my YOLO degenerate shit is getting fucked right now. But it's weird because it's just such a slow little... It's not like a confident breakout. It's just like a little bleed like it went up got smacked it's trying to go again i guess the cues are holding maybe maybe i should throw in the towel if the cues end up recapturing 360 but i see weakness in microsoft apple is doing nothing tesla unfortunately bouncing back a little bit meta not doing anything pkng DraftKings got a bit of a bounce there, up 1.6%. Penn, we have gambling. So, like, leisure and travel seems to be, I guess, like some disposable income stuff. Uh, Walgreens, WBA. That's a dumb one. Walgreens still down 9%, getting smacked right now. Uh, SPX at the five minute, 200 EMA. Ooh. Matt, what are your plays? Uh, spy puts, Tesla puts, IEP puts and Microsoft puts all spread between tomorrow and late July. Well, I think, I mean, right here, you do have a, a classic bear channel, um, parallel line on the highs, parallel line on the lows. Uh, the trick with this stuff is just knowing like it's tough to predict the break time but when you trend upward like this it commonly does break down oops why can i not do the hotkey that i have set up do i have to delete this and remake a hotkey here we go um this right here what I just showed you on the three minute chart, commonly referred to as a bear channel, parallel line of higher highs, parallel line of 
higher lows. It's called a bear channel because it commonly breaks to the downside. The caveat to it is you just don't know how long it's going to build out. Like it could just keep building out in the channel. Actually, do I have the odds on this? Uh, channels. 73% accuracy. These apparently work with 73% accuracy. So obviously watching this, praying that it goes my way. I've been on a lucky streak and I figure, hey, if you're lucky, just keep doubling, tripling, quadruple down. KRE, oh, the regional banking sector is up. KREs, oh, ooh, this is what we're finding out. The fact that regional banking is up, that is currently representative of something larger going on because like of people worrying that these things were going to get slaughtered. So Pack West, what happened? That's it. That's it. That's it. Uh, if we were giving out gold stars, which we can't do it until this gets to a thousand subs. If you want to help this channel get to a thousand subs, here's the link right there. Uh, you guys, it's in your control. 453 more people and then gold stars are back on the menu um as soon as this hits a thousand but that is it it's definitely the fact that all these regional banks which is representative of less like people are worrying less that shit's gonna blow up so did the fed say something did the fed say something Trump's attack includes special counsel's family after bombshell audio revealed. Wait, what? Trump's latest attack includes special counsel's family after bombshell tape revealed. Former President Donald Trump intensified his attacks on special counsel Jack Smith, who oversaw the classified documents probe that led to Trump's federal indictment. Trump rallied against Smith and his criminal case on social media and asked for someone to explain his position to the special counsel and his family and friends. Trump's latest position came after CNN and other outlets published an audio recording after a meeting uh, of a meeting in which Trump references a document. He says it's highly confidential and secret. Uh, I must have missed this one, an audio tape. Exclusive CNN obtains the tape of Trump's 2021 conversation about classified documents. Larry, Larry, check this out. With On Deck, we could get a small business a loan fast and start hiring to... more help right away. Or loan cannon. Huh? Oh! <laughs> why loan cannon? Why? There's a better way to get a fast small business loan. On Deck, the online lender that makes it easy to choose your loan and if approved, get funds I bought as more soon spy as the same puts. day. Your loan now is that on deck. it fell out of that channel. We have obtained what is expected to be a central piece of the government's case against Donald Trump. The actual audio recording, recording of the former president talking as if he's showing a highly classified document on U.S. war plans against Iran with people not clear to even know it exists, let alone what's in it. In a moment, only on CNN, you will hear what jurors will hear one day. The recording was made two summers ago, July 2021, at the former president's club in Bedminster, New Jersey. You will clearly hear the former president as he is speaking Tesla to several vomiting. people. According to the special counsel's indictment, they include a writer working on Mark Meadows' memoir, the publisher, and two of Trump's staff members. The president was aware he was being recorded. This is the first time it is being played publicly. These are bad, sick people. That, but, was, that was your coup, you know, the, against you. That's well, it they, started right at the like beginning. Like when Millie's talking about, oh, you were going to try to do a coup. No, they, they were trying right. to do that before you even were sworn in. That's right. Trying Millie, to overthrow yeah. your election. Well, with Millie, uh, let me see that. I'll, I'll show you an example. He said that I wanted to attack Iran. Isn't it amazing? I have a big pile of papers. This thing just came up. Look. This was him. They presented me this. This is off the record, but they presented me this. This was him. This was the Defense Department and him. Wow. We looked at some. This was him. This wasn't done by me. This was him. Yeah. All sorts of stuff. It's pages long. Look. Mm. Wait a minute. Let's see here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just found, isn't that amazing? 
this totally wins my case, you know. Mm -hmm. Except it is like highly confidential, yeah. <laughs> secret. This is secret information. But look, look at this. You attack. And Hillary would print that out all the time. Oh, brother. <laughs> she'd send it, email. No, she'd send it to yeah. Anthony Weiner. Yeah, yeah. The pervert. Um, by the way, isn't that incredible? Though? Yeah. I was just saying, because we were talking about it. And, you know, he said, he wanted to attack Iran and what? Yeah, He's in the papers. Did. Pretty, wow. This was done by the military, given to me. Uh, I think we can probably, right? I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, we'll have to try to figure out a, a yeah. See, as president, I could have declassified yeah. it. Now I can't, you know, but this is yeah, classified. Now, now we have a problem. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It's so cool. I mean, it's so, I'm, look, we here and I have, and you probably almost didn't believe me, but now you believe me. No, it's, I believe It's you. incredible, right? No. They, hey, bring some, uh, bring some Cokes in, please. Need a small business loan fast? Well, we don't need to listen to that. Um, I, I don't really fully understand if that is or isn't damning. Uh, I feel like I missed out because it does seem. I was looking over here. It does seem to be making its rounds on the internet. Uh, I don't get it. This is Stephen Burns, Lordtown Motor for, founder and former CEO. Four days ago, he disclosed he had dumped his entire stake in the company, earning an estimated three point eight five million this morning. Lord Sound declared bankruptcy. This is so messed up. Talk about insider trading. This is why a lot of the times like Wall Street and insiders and the rich get such a bad rap is because they do legitimately bad things. If you guys missed the news, Lord Sound Motor, ticker symbol ride, part of the EV craziness. This is the CEO. This is Stephen Burns, Lord Sound Motors founder and former CEO four days ago, four days ago. Blew up today, but four days ago, he disclosed that he dumped his entire stake in the company, earning an estimated $3.85 million. This morning, Lordstown declared bankruptcy. That's the definition of insider trading. How it's, I don't understand how it's legal. It probably isn't. I don't know if anyone looks into it. This is absolutely disgusting. That is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Matt Coins, have you found your NFT yet? I have videos about it. Uh, oh, we're breaking down. Fuck yeah. Okay, cool. Well, we broke down from this bear channel, so I think that was a good teaching opportunity. Uh, I would love now for it to stay below fourth. Uh, shit, I didn't mean for that to go off. Uh, I would love for Apple to stay below 186.23. I like that. Obviously, uh, my next target would be 185.67. On Tesla, I'm looking at 240.85. On the Qs, I'm looking for this intraday low of 358.51, which it almost just tagged. Um, but mm, looking a little bit whippy. For all I know, this might just be another freaking fake out. I did uh, get more of those spy puts. I did average down just to uh, obviously taking on more risk, but bringing my the chance of me being break even a little bit closer. What is this? Why are we getting such dramatic bounces? Look at this. Another flush. It goes right below the low, stops people out, bounces hard. Every single day, this is becoming like more and more apparent. And as I, as I previously alluded to, it's nothing new. It really, really isn't. This is what happens, but it just seems like it's happening uh, more now. Uh, so I definitely want to point it out to you that whether you're setting your stops, this or that. I mean, even this morning, it happens both ways. I'm not saying it's just against the bears or just against the bulls. Look at this. So we have a high here at 939, but then check this out. We flush these people out. So there's people who bought the breakout and really it's the smart longs who ended up selling to them at a premium and then it gets dumped on them. People were tricked to going in here. This is really why I think it's not the best idea, especially on the small time frame the short time frame to be buying breakouts because there's just so many whips like this. So basically the smart longs got long here, wrote it all the way up, sold it to the suckers, got dumped on them. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada bing, bada boom. Forget about it. Bada bing, bada boom. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. 
All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Do, 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 do. Just setting this up. Uh, like I said, uh, Tesla, I'm gonna, I'd prefer it stay below this. Like, I don't even want it to recapture the trend line, but Tesla, I'm gonna get excited about below 241. Q's looking heavy to me. I'm seeing lower highs. I see a huge fake out liquidity wick. They smashed it, lower highs, same lows. Potential double bottom, it could bounce off of that. Uh, the Q's are weaker. It does seem like the overall market, for whatever reason, oh, that's what I wanted to look up. There is a relief, and that's why we're seeing regional banks popping but what was it nothing oh 929 uh truest securities analyst brandon king reiterates pack west uh, with a hold and maintain a 13 dollars price target so is it because of one price i thought there'd be a bigger announcement than that what are the Tesla, NVIDIA, AMD, AI, Apple, Lucid, Microsoft, Snow, SPC, and Disney are the biggest trending stocks on Wall Street Bets. What else? What else? What else? What else? I'm not seeing any major news. Whatever it is, is regional banking is definitely catching a huge bid. I mean, you could see it in the um, KRE. This is the ETF tracking it. But PacWest, crazy strong. Uh, Wall, crazy strong. So regional banking, uh, you can almost hear the audible sigh of relief. Uh, that definitely is somewhat what has to do with the overall market. Because if there's a sigh of relief, it's the market saying, hey, like maybe the fears of this stuff fucking cratering are uh, overstated. So that's going to be helping the overall market without a doubt. Uh, definitely looking for the cues to get smacked right up this trend line. And I would highly prefer that the SPY come right. That's a strong bounce. Dude, just another like liquidity grab, liquidity grab, liquidity. It's just getting, everyone's getting, it's really trappy right now. Uh, it, it does not seem as this is the environment that we're getting clear breakouts and clear breakdowns. Or maybe another way to say that would be like clean breakouts. We get above it and we rip or clean breakdowns. We get below it and we keep falling. This is the opposite of that. It's so choppy and whippy. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. And because of that, it's probably somewhat of a fair argument that you have to widen your stops. And if you're widening your stops, that means you're taking on more risk. And then to like keep your risk within check, that probably means you need to be taking a smaller size bets, I think would be a fair interpretation. Apple, look at this, an potentially another fake out breakdown comes down, but pushes right back up. Apple went from 186 to 186.35 and potentially still going right here. We're just getting all these fucking fake outs. It's so incredibly frustrating. I suppose if you actively realize it and it's just not really your style, if you're like, dude, I just get like chopped in this. It's, it's definitely a, a huge skill and a huge advantage to be able to recognize what kind of environment you're in to know when maybe you should just not be trading. Look at this. Like I just got fucked there. I try to bring my average down a little bit on the breakdown. Cause I'm like, Oh great. Apple's breaking down. Tesla's showing some weakness. I thought the cues were about to test, but no, they, the low was 358.51 and look at the actual low 358.55. So they undershot it by four cents and then they bounce it right off of it. This is dirty. Like it, it's just so fucking trappy uh, in real time today. You've all witnessed multiple, multiple just fakeouts in, in all directions. Uh, it happens, it happens, it happens, it happens. I'm now back to instead of any reasonable risk reward and technical analysis or doing anything that I should theoretically be doing. I'm at the point of just fucking praying. Such bullshit. Fuck this market. It's more painful the fact that like I called it out beforehand that today's probably going to be a shitty chop day. But fuck, man. Just barely making these fresh lows. Such a pain in the dick. Tough trading day. Tough day trading day for sure. Look at this. Even working nice, beautiful crossovers to huge bounces. Huge pain in the ass. Huge pain in the ass. 
All right. Uh, well, it is past 11. I do have a couple calls and things to take care of. I will be back for trading um, for Power Hour today. We'll do some live trading in Power Hour. So wherever you're watching me, Rumble, YouTube, maybe you're even watching on Twitter, we will be back at 3.30 today. Don't forget to become a Goonie, macros.locals.com. It's pinned to the top of chat. And if you're on Rumble, don't forget to check out the hedge fund interview of how to successfully trade options. I will also put it in chat right now. I'm throwing it in YouTube chat on Rumble. It's already on Rumble. So just search Coors and David Sun. You could probably find it. Uh, but here's what the YouTube channel looks like. Uh, we're trying to run this up to 1,000 subs. So if you want to be a part of me hitting that goal, if you want to say you were in on this channel before 1,000 subs, this is your opportunity. But once again, just to be specifically clear, the content's also on Rumble. There, It's not like... If anything, Rumble sometimes gets exclusive content, but in this particular scenario, uh, they're going to both. It just happens to do, um, it just happens to do with how YouTube algorithm like commonly screws over streamers. But that is life. Uh, so do, 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 let me switch it over here. Become a Goonie, macros.locals.com, pinned to the top of chat in the description of the video. In the midday, if you're looking to learn something, if you're looking about the markets, I highly, highly, highly recommend listening to the conversation with David Sun. Uh, it's in the uh, it's in the description. It, it's good. You're going to learn a lot, a lot, a lot of a retail trader who is successful enough to now run two different hedge funds. I truly, truly think you're going to enjoy it. And obviously, uh, would love to get, get your thoughts on how you want me to improve them in the future. The next person you want me to interview, uh, you guys definitely had some good uh, suggestions. So very much appreciate that. I'll catch you at 3.30 today for the Power Hour stream. And we'll kind of go from there. Enjoy your midday session. Be careful. Attempt to not get chopped up. It's a very, very choppy environment. It's a lot of fake outs in both directions. This is a day where I just wish I did not trade, if I'm being completely honest. But maybe maybe in the second half of the day, we're going to get some nice, beautiful trend that we can actually successfully trade off of. So stay tuned. I'll catch you later. Thanks for all the good vibes. Peace out.